Hey everyone, we are seven miles west in San Antonio at Joint Base San Antonio Lackland. This base is home to the Air Force's 502nd Air Base Wing. Their primary mission is training, flight training, medical delivery, basic airman training. So you might be a bit confused. Why am I here? This is the spot where 209 nuclear warhead assemblies detonated in 1963. My name is Natasha Bajma, and these are my dogs, Charlie and Luna. We're embarking on the adventure of a lifetime, a 365 day journey across America with my Ford 350 Super Duty pickup truck and a truck camper. But this is no ordinary road trip. This is what happens when a disillusioned nuclear weapons expert going through a midlife crisis, tries to begin a new career, but can't quite get off topic. Radioactive Road Tripping is a travelogue show that documents my transformation from a longtime national security expert to a newbie director, cinematographer, and producer. After that introduction, you probably have a lot of questions. Like how in the world did we let 209 nuclear weapons assemblies detonate? Why didn't the explosion annihilate the entire city of San Antonio? And why don't we know anything about it? Thanks to the awesome public affairs team at Joint Base San Antonio Lackland, I got the opportunity to tour a forgotten part of Lackland Air Force Base called Medina Base. It was once a top secret nuclear weapon storage site for the US government. So now you're probably saying, wait a minute, the U.S. government stored nuclear weapons near large cities like San Antonio? Yes, they stored nuclear weapons all across the United States at 13 sites. The first nuclear weapons were produced in 1945, but back then we only had a handful or two in our stockpile. By the 1950s, the U.S. nuclear weapons stockpile began to kick into high gear, reaching more than 28,000 weapons by 1963. Not all of these were to be deployed on missiles, planes, and submarines, and so they needed to be stored someplace. There were two types of top secret storage sites that existed during the Cold War, national stockpile sites and operational storage sites. There were a total of six national stockpile storage sites overseen by the Atomic Energy Commission. Two of them were located in Texas, one called Medina Base at Lackland, and the other one called Kylene Base which is located at today's Fort Hood. Medina Base consists of about 100 igloos or rectangular bunkers, each designed for the storage of munitions, including nuclear weapons. The igloos were built out of reinforced steel and concrete, and they are about the size of four two-car garages. They are rounded at the top and buried partially underground for extra stability. It's unclear how many nuclear weapons were stored here at Medina Base, but this site has enough capacity to store thousands. I don't know about you, but I'm kind of excited to take a look inside. It's hard to articulate what I'm feeling right now. I've been a nuclear weapons expert for more than 20 years, and very rarely have I had the opportunity to be where nuclear weapons once were. And so as I enter this igloo, um, I'm speechless, actually. I mean, think about it. This igloo was once home to the world's most destructive weapons. A single weapon could annihilate an entire city. And of course, being a nerd in all things, the one thing that I was tempted to do was, wait for it. Okay, okay, I know that was rather lame, but I couldn't help myself. Now we're headed to go see igloo number 572. This is the one that blew up in 1963. 
1963, a nuclear warhead assembly in a storage igloo sparked and caught fire, igniting the high explosives in the shell. Seconds later, the entire contents of the igloo, all 209 nuclear warhead assemblies, blew up, sending about 123,000 pounds of TNT into the air. The explosion was so powerful that the one-ton steel door of the igloo flew across a highway hundreds of feet away. The explosion left behind a crater about the size of a football field. The detonation was felt many miles away. Dishes were thrown from shelves and windows shattered. Thankfully, no one was killed in this accident. Today, there are no signs of what happened here many decades ago. So why didn't this accident annihilate San Antonio? The nuclear weapons assemblies were spheres made of high explosives, each about the size of a beach ball and weighing several hundred pounds but they were stored separately from their fizzle capsules to prevent a nuclear detonation. And why haven't you ever heard of it? This event was overtaken by the news cycle. On November 21, just eight days after the blast, President John F. Kennedy and the First Lady Jacqueline Kennedy landed in San Antonio airport for their visit to Texas. On November 22, the very next day, President Kennedy was assassinated in Dallas. If you want to follow my journey, please remember to subscribe to my YouTube channel. If you'd like to have access to behind the scenes content and exclusive merchandise, become a patron at patreon.com forward slash Natasha Bajima 